In this video, you will learn how to harden your SSH server by few steps using SSH audit to reconfigure your open SSH server, allowing only good algorithm to be used and any and disallowing any misconfiguration, but also disable root login, disable also password authentication by creating a strong public and private key to be used as authentication. And finally, we will add another layer of authentication for the most paranoid of us by using a multi-factor authentication. So at the end of the day, nothing is immune to attack, nothing is immune to vulnerability. These few steps will make will harden your SSH server to a point where trying to hack it or trying to breach it will be a very, very time consuming and not to basically not worth it so without making it longer we will jump directly to the practice first thing first we need to harden our ssh server if you download ssh audit and you run it by doing a simple command on your server as you can see there is a lot of misconfiguration this this tool allow you to audit your ssh configuration and here we can see that wrong algorithm are used wrong key are used and we don't want this so to do so we'll go to the website ssh audit you choose hardening guide here you choose your server distribution mine is debian 12 and we have a list of command to follow first we will reconfigure our open ssh server And we will generate new keys. Then we will enable the RSI key to the sshd config file. We, we will remove the helmet module. Sorry. And finally, we will restrict the use of some algorithm. Once everything is, is done, we will restart our SSH server. And if we run again the audit, you can see that everything now is clean and ready to go. So the next step would be to never use a password to connect to our server. So to do so, in your client side, you will create a new key with SSH key generator, and you will choose a particular algorithm. This one is way stronger than uh, RSA. Here you can name it if you want, or you can leave it as default. Note that if you have multiple keys, probably you will need to rename it, otherwise it will overwrite your present, your already existing keys. And you choose a passphrase. This step of choosing a passphrase is very important because if you don't do so, if your private key is stolen, everyone can use it. In this scenario, even if it's stolen, no one can use it if they don't have the passphrase, obviously. Now that the keys are created, we can go look what, where they are. It will be in the fold, in your home folder .ssh. And as you can see, I have a private key and a, and a public key. So what we want to do now is to copy the public key to the server. And to do so, we will use ssh copy id dash I, and here you put the for, the the path of your key. So for me, it would be user and make sure to copy the public key, not the private. The private has to stay in your client, and you want to copy to our server, which is in my case c six point two six. We accept the fingerprint, 
we provide the password of the server and the key is now copied. And if you go back to our server, now we have a .ssh file in the home folder. And if we list, we have an authorized key. And you can see what is inside. And as you can see, I have an authorized key with the algorithm that we choose when generating it to my client. Now we want to disable totally the possibility to connect to the password. So to do so, we will go to the etc ssh and sshd config file and here we will look for permit password authentication and we put it to no permit empty password is already no and now that it <coughs> now that this is done we will save the file and restart the SSH server. If we try to log in to the server without the keys, this is what will happen. We will be prompted with a permission denied, but if we provide the private key, with the dash y dash i command we put the path to our private key and our server we still need to provide the passphrase of that key that we set and here we go. Now we are connected via SSH with that key. Without this key, you cannot connect. So now that this is done, what we want to do is disable totally the root login. We do not want anyone to connect with the root login. So to do so, we go back to our configuration file. And here we have a permit root login. And we will set it to no. And again, we restart the SSH server. And from no one, no one can connect with the root login and no one can connect without our private key. And now <coughs> we can try to connect to the root login. And we have a permission denied. And now, <clears throat> one last step to make it really secure would be to install an MFA, a multi factor authentication. It will add another layer to security your SSH server. So, to do so, we will install Google Authenticator. It's open source, it's not like it's developed by Google, but it's open source. And when it's, it is installed, we will just run it. And here you have a big QR code that you can scan either with an application that you have in your phone or with the password manager with the, this secret key. And now that we provided this, we will save this passphrase in case you lost your MFA authentication. You so basically here you will say yes to everything except one. So this you say no. You don't want to use a four minute delay. You want to use only the, the code that are generated to the present time. And for everything else you say yes. Perfect. Here we will need to configure this file, the sshd under pamd. And you want to comment out 
this because we do not need it. If you let it comment it out, for every connection he will ask you a password. But since we are using a private key, we do not need to insert a password. So you comment it out and you go to the end of your file. We will add, and this line would be authentication required pan underscore google underscore authenticator dash dot so we will save the file and now we will configure the nano etc ssh sshd config file so basically here we will look for the challenge authentication here so challenge challenge response and we will set it to yes and you will look for your use spam and you let it to yes too and under the use spam we'll add an, another line authentication method public key comma password public key comma keyboard interactive and now we can save the file and now as usual we restart the ssh server and we will see if our change is applied so we will try to connect with our key that is under our folder to our server and here he will ask us for our passphrase and a verification code a 2FA so we copy it we passed our 2FA and we are connected as you can see we manage to set up a very strong private key we put to this pass private key a password so in case this private key is stolen it will be useless without the password and finally we added another layer of protect by adding a 2fa authentication now you cannot say that your ssh server is not secure and one last good practice would be to change the port so let me show you if you go back to our ssh configuration file here we have the port 22 by default a good practice would be to change it and this is not really for security reason a simple nmap scan will find what where is the port that you choose like for example if i change it from 22 to a random number like 4949 and i save it and changing this port is not really a security thing because a simple nmap scan would allow the attacker to find which port you use for your ssh this will is a prevention against tool that scrap the internet for port 22 since port 22 is the default port for ssh some people like uchodan for example scrap the internet and try to find any port open at 22 by Closing your 22 port, you will avoid scrapping. But if someone is spear attacking you, like focus on you, he will find the port you use for your SSH. So it is a good practice to change the port, but honestly, not for security reason, but just to avoid what I told you. And here it is. This is how you can secure your ssh i hope the video was useful and that you learned something uh, if it was the case put a, a like would be very appreciated subscribe even more and hope to see you soon have a nice one